which forms a cocoon and that is the silk the thread that has been used to produce a fabric now to produce a fabric the seri, uh, silk worm has to eat some food and their staple food is mulberry leaves so what are the different types of uh, mulberry leaves that you're going to eat and how you are going to uh, cultivate this uh, plants or uh, shrubs is what is all about in this class taxonomy of mulberry so when you're talking about the taxonomy of the mulberry uh, they come under kingdom plantae because you're here you're not talking about the worms but you're talking about the plants so kingdom plantae uh, division is uh, phenoro game uh, the may is uh, one that is which generates the seeds we are going to talk about the class. It is angiospermia, or uh, that which uh, gives the flower, flowers to the plant. And subclass dicotyledonae, that is, uh, they are going to have two cotyledons, or the articles, family Moraceae, genus Morus. And a genus Morus, they are having different types of species because uh, each type of the silkworm uh, is going to eat different types of. Uh, leaves of that plant. So when you're talking about the genus Morus, there are different types of species. First one comes is Morus alba. Uh, Morus alba is a very superior quality leaves where uh, uh, the uh, the leaf, the quality of the leaf uh, is so superior that uh, you get a superior quality of silkworm. So mostly Morus alba is the one that is going to be uh, taken by this uh, silkworm to give a superior kind of a uh, silk thread. Then you have Morus indica, Morus lavigata, Morus serrata, Morus nigra, Morus cathayana, and Morus uh, uh, multicolors. There are different types, but Alba indica, lavigata, and serrata belongs to uh, Himalayan regions where they are widely uh, grown over there. Now, mulberry is a very fast growing perennial plant because uh, they, are, uh, they don't have a, any seasons over there. So they, they're going to grow very fast and they're very perennial. They're going to live all, uh, for uh, all the seasons over there. And its leaves are exclusive for uh, food as silkworm, for the exclusive food for the silkworm. That's what I told. With a leaf of uh, white mulberry, uh, that is the Morus alba, as I told you, uh, which produces a high quality and quantity of the same. It is estimated that one metric ton, that is 1,000 kg of mulberry leaves is needed to yield 25 to 30 kg of cocoon of high quality, that is we are talking about Morris alba. The tree normally uh, spreads in the tropics and there is a small cluster of uh, red, black or white uh, termed mulberries according to the color of the fruit. So you have different colors. Uh, you must have seen uh, during the season of uh, uh, April, May and June, uh, they, they keep selling these uh, uh, mulberries outside. You have different colors, black, red, white and all those things. Among that, uh, the white ones are uh, superior ones which the mulberries uh, tend to take. And uh, the white mulberry is the one that is used, to, uh, used for silk rearing. Mulberry leaf uh, protein is a source for the silk worm to synthesize the silk, which is made up of uh, fibroin and sericin is uh, the two proteins that uh, the leaves are going to give, which is most important. These are the two proteins that are most important for the production of silk. So in India, only five important species of mulberry, namely Morus indica, Morus alba, Morus bambusus. Uh, more as uh, sinensis and uh, multi collars are mostly cultivated. Now, if you can see in this picture over here, um, uh, you have those uh, more as uh, indica, more as alba, and more as uh, uh, multi collars. Uh, these are the uh, structures that you find over here, um, the leaves, uh, which are uh, of the different types which I was talking about in this particular um, species over there. So how they are going to grow uh, is what is uh, uh, that we are going to talk about over here. And uh, what is that that is going to grow? I'll just uh, uh, show the uh, pics how they look like over there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, when you're talking about the, the yeah, I was talking about uh, this particular, uh, um, show you the, this is the leaf over here. This is uh, Morris alpha. 
one is bambuses, sinensis, and multicolors. Here, yeah, this is indica, this is alba. So you can see the leaf. Uh, the leaves are very glossy and nice green in color. And multicolors, uh, this leaves uh, almost resembles like our uh, uh, hibiscus plants over there. So they are varied shapes over here, uh, almost a lobe, uh, lobe shape uh, are also found over here. So when you're talking about the morphology of the mulberry tree, if you can see over here, these are the fast growing deciduous medium sized uh, tree or shrub that grows almost to the height of 22 to 25 feet. Uh, but here you can see this is a small one that is uh, they don't allow them to grow tall the branches are periodically cut off so that uh, it becomes a shrubby or almost like a shrub uh, size uh, what's the importance that is because they need lots of leaves for rearing the larval forms the plant is perennial and has a dense spreading crown generally wider than the height of the tree so this is what it is and the white mulberry can have a pyramidal shape or uh, having a drooping habit so if you can see the leaves are all drooping over there so they also have a drooping type of uh, uh, growth in them and the mulberry is cultivated uh, at more of branches than of stem because the more the branches, the more the leaves. The more the leaves, uh, your uh, silk, uh, the larval forms of the silk form is uh, fed properly so that we get a proper amount of, good amount of uh, silk thread. So in multi time areas, so what do you mean by multi time where you have a number of generations in, in a year. If it's a uni time, it's only one generation per year. And if it's a di time, it is two generations per year. But in a multi time, you can have three to four generations in a year. Uh, mostly these are grown in India. Uh, the plant size uh, doesn't, uh, they don't allow the plant size to grow more than 1.5 to 1.8 meters. Why? Because uh, it is easy to uh, uh, cut the leaves uh, and uh, feed the worms. If, if they are going to become trees, then uh, it you need a lot of manpower to cut those leaves. And it is also tedious one to climb a tree and cut the leaves. So it's not more than 1.5 to 1.8 meters. And uh, However, in univoltaic time areas, the trees, uh, they are allowed to grow as tree and as uh, bushes. But in India, definitely, they are allowed to grow as bushes. Stems. When you're talking about stems over here, uh, if you can see the bark over here, uh, the bark of a young tree is almost brownish orange in color. Uh, but here it is almost aged one. So the bark has turned uh, gray or dark in color. And they also develop irregular ridges uh, or cracks, which is also called as lentils. When you're talking about the leaves, if you can see the leaves over here, you can see that uh, lobed structures uh, that you find almost like that of the grapes or leaves over here. Uh, alternate, they are growing alternately. So if one side, if you have the leaves over there, then they alternate on the other side. It's not uh, opposite to them. Uh, that's called alternate. Glossy, if you can see the shine on the leaves over there, they're, they're glossy green in color and they vary greatly in the sh uh, shape. So that is from a simple to lobed one. Uh, simple one we just now saw in the multicolors where it resembled like that of a uh, hibiscus leaves. But here, uh, sometimes you can uh, see them, they have uh, lobed uh, leaves over here. Shaded trees tend to have more simple leaves. So they need a proper sunlight for uh, the lobes to be developed. Otherwise, they have a very simple leaves. And the leaves have strong three uh, veins. If you can see that uh, strong three veins, this side and that side, uh, originating from the base. Uh, and the leaves turn yellow when they fall. Or uh, uh, during the fall, uh, the uh, leaves turn yellow in color. Coming to the flowers, perfect, small, greenish to yellow in color, and they occur in spikes. So you can see over here in this flower, they have those spike-like structures. Uh, uh, so they occur in spikes. And uh, when you talk about the fruits and the seeds over here, if you can see the fruits over here, the fruits from uh, uh, form uh, from the female uh, plants over here, the fruits, otherwise a male plant has only a flower over there, multiple seeded berries that range in the color of black to pink to white when ripe. Uh, you can see all the colors over here. They contain abundant seed and can produce almost 20 million seeds because each one, has, uh, that is the reason they are called as mulberries. Uh, they have those, uh, a lot of seeds over there. So this was about how a tree looks like, that's a morphology of the tree. Now you should learn about how you're going to propagate the uh, tree over there, so how you're going to grow. So for example, if you're going to have your own uh, small scale industry where you're going to uh, uh, 
we are the silkworms you should know how to propagate the plants also so that you can cut short uh, cut down on the expenses when you have to buy them from uh, the third party so how you are going to propagate them uh, you should have a, a little bit of idea on that so coming to ecological requirements because each plant has its own type of climatic condition that it needs how much of water they need uh, what are the soil condition it should have so here mulberry has its own type of uh, soil condition so here what are their climate for example optimum growth of the mulberry and good sprouting means uh, they need a temperature ranging from say around 13 degrees to 37 degrees centigrade uh, in that uh, the best or the optimum temperature the ideal temperature for the mulberry to do very well is anywhere between 24 to 28 degrees a little bit uh, less warmer uh, uh, less cold conditions uh, or the a medium type of temperature is what they need, not very hot, not very uh, cold. So 24 to 28 will be an ideal temperature for the plant to grow well. And the relative humidity is around 65 to 80 percent and uh, sunshine duration should always be around 5 to 12 hours per day so that they have a proper uh, growth of leaves. We saw that uh, if they are in a shaded condition, the leaves are very normal. But if they are having a good sunshine, uh, the leaves are nicely glossy in color and of course they are low. So they need a 5 to 12 hour of uh, sunlight uh, every day. And uh, this can be grown in a rainfall range of 600 mm to 2500 mm. Under low rainfall conditions, they need uh, additional supplement of irrigation. That is on an average at least a minimum of 50 mm once in 10 days is considered ideal for mulberry. What is a soil? What should the soil be like for the nutrition that it has to absorb? Slightly acidic soil is what the mulberry prefers because they don't like alkaline. So a range of uh, 6.2 to 6.8 pH is ideal uh, soil for the mulberry plants to grow. And uh, the plant should not have any injurious soils uh, present in them. And um, as I said, it doesn't need the saline or uh, alkaline uh, soil is not preferred by this mulberry nursery now you if you have to grow them you need to have a, a nursery that is first thing is you need to have that small sapling so that you can remove them and plant them in a uh, elsewhere place where they can go very well because you cannot uh, uh, grow this small small plant at different different ranges uh, because uh, chances of uh, they getting destroyed when you're walking on all, all those things so when you're going to grow a small plant, it should have a separate place where you can take care of them and uh, you give them proper uh, manure so that they can grow well. So what is the preparation of nursery bed over here? If you can see in this picture, you're going to select 800 square meters area for of red loamy soil. So you can see the color of the soil over there, the red loamy soil near the water source because they need water, small plants. If you don't give them proper water, uh, they are going to uh, die because the roots are not so well developed so that they can move around to collect the water and uh, this is needed 800 square meters is needed for planting one hectare of main field uh, if you have one hectare then definitely you should have a 800 square meter area for uh, preparing the nursery plants and you're going to apply 600, 1600 kgs of farmyard manure uh, to the soil so that uh, they have the, uh, the soil is thoroughly nourished for the uh, nursery plants to grow well. And then the nursery beds, you're going to prepare uh, four meters into 1.5 meter size. Uh, each size you can see over there, the, the, that is the size where you're going to prepare a four meter and a 1.5 meters uh, boxes like that so that you can manage them very well. That is because they need a proper uh, irrigation sources. You need to water them properly. And of course, drainage channels should be there. So if there is no proper drainage, then the, uh, the plants are going to rot and they may die. So they have to have a proper drainage channel and of course uh, avoid any shady area because they love sunlight so without sunlight they're not going to grow seedling method of propagation so uh, when you want to uh, grow the plants you should know how you're going to sow the seeds and get the products so here you are going to talk about different types uh, of uh, propagation methods so coming to the first one you're going to talk about the seedling uh, method of propagation. So what is a seedling method of propagation? First thing is, of course, you have to collect the seed. When are you going to collect the seeds and how you're going to collect seeds? You're going to col collect only the ripe seeds because they're going, to, they're, they're going to be very healthy. 
the ripe fully grown seeds ripe healthy strong and high yielding and disease and pest free plants because the leaves that you are going to provide to the uh, silkworm should be really healthy strong and uh, they should not have any disease because uh, if they are going to be disease prone then your larval are also going to be uh, disease prone so you have to be very careful when you are providing the leaves so the seeds that you are going to select should be of a high quality uh, seed from a very strong healthy uh, plants and of course disease resistant and usually this is collected from the month of march to april march and april are ideal for collection of seeds from the plants so you have collected the seeds you are not going to do the nursery uh, sowing the seeds right away so you are going to store them because you are not going to do it immediately so how you are going to store this freshly collected seeds uh, because freshly collected seeds have a high percentage of uh, germination so you have to be very careful you must have seen at home also if you collect some seeds and keep it uh, uh, in the open air and if there is a little bit of moisture then they are going to germinate and uh, you you can see those um, uh, small small saplings coming out of the seeds so to avoid that because you don't want to spoil the collected seeds so you what you're going to do you're going to uh, store them in a airtight containers and you're going to keep it in a cool place tightly sealed and airtight containers uh, if you want to that is when you're just going to collect it and uh, you you need a, a day or two times to go and uh, sow the seeds but if you want to store them for more than two or three months then what you're going to do is you are going to uh, uh, store them in uh, over a quick lime that is calcium uh, chloride quick lime carbonate or uh, calcium chloride or uh, the best uh, way is to refrigerate them keep them in the fridge and they are as good as uh, the fresh seeds so whenever you want to sow them you can just take it out and sow them now when the sowing time comes what you're going to do when you have to sow them uh, the germination requires a soil temperature of 20 degrees because we already talked about what is the temperature, uh, uh, optimum temperature for the development of the plants. It's anywhere between uh, 24 and 27 degrees centigrade. So here, the, uh, the seed requires a soil temperature of 20 degrees. Seeds are soaked in the water for 24 hours. So you have to soak the seeds in the water for 24 hours so that the, the outer covering, that's a testa, uh, is softened. And uh, by uh, immersing in the water for 24 hours, you are also eliminating the non viable, that is, those cells which are not going to germinate or which are going to, which are infected with some uh, insects uh, and some unfertilized seeds can be removed because they are going to be floating on the uh, top layer of the water where you have soaked in. So uh, all those can be removed and only those that are viable is going to settle down on the bottom of the uh, vessel where you have soaked them. So those are the ones that you're going to collect and soak. So this is seedling method of propagation. So when you're talking about asexual propagation where you're not going to use a seed, uh, you're going to use directly the cuttings. So that is called as asexual. Uh, propagation, uh, how to grow them, how to take care of them. And uh, this is uh, the capability of vegetative accessories. So it can be a bud of the shoot, it can be the shoot itself, or it can be even the roots, uh, which can be used for propagation of mulberries. So here we are going to talk about three types of uh, propagation of are under the sexual propagation. We are going to talk about the cutting, grafting, and layering. So here we are going to talk about three types under uh, the mulberry propagation other than the seedling propagation you need to talk about the three different propagation that is uh, how you're going to cut and uh, propagate them or grafting or layering so we'll talk about the cutting type of propagation first so this is the most important and easiest method of propagation because you're going to be to get a high yield over here uh, um, the and also, uh, when you're taking a cutting of a plant, it's going to maintain that same character what a parent plant had. So the, the same thing. So you're going to grow a clone of the parent. So that is uh, uh, what you can talk about in asexual reproduction. You're going to get a clone of the parent. So it is going to maintain the particular uh, character of the plant and they give rise to large number of saplings in a shorter duration because you're already taken a uh, mature uh, cutting or a branch it is going to uh, grow in a faster period because uh, uh, the dominant period is lost uh, and uh, you're going to directly uh, make the plants to uh, grow in larger numbers. So in tropical and subtropical region, this is the most common method of 
mulberry uh, propagation. So tropical means in India can come under the tropical condition. Selection of planting material. So how you are going to select the planting material over here? So if you can see in this picture over there, uh, you can see the uh, the shoot that I have taken uh, or the shoot that they take, the cutting that uh, they have taken. So in this picture, you can see how uh, correctly you have to make a cut. So you can't make any uh, uh, cutting as and how you like because you can, if you can see this is correct and the rest of the tree is wrong, he says over here. So what is the correct one over here? So you have a stem over there uh, or a small branch which is cut at 45 degrees angle. And you can see from the place where it is cut and where the butt is. So there should be no uh, much uh, uh, space uh, or uh, it should not be very close to where the, the, the cutting has been done. So in this, what happens is it is very angular and the butt is too far away. So this is not correct. In this part, uh, though the cutting is correct, the butt is too close to where we have uh, chopped it. So this is also not going to be correct. And this also is not going to be correct because it is too high and the cutting is not perfectly done. It's almost straight in shape. So what is the correct one over here? So this uh, uh, cutting where it has a exact 45 degrees angle and there is a space for the buds over there, at least two minimum bud is necessary. So generally the mulberry plants are raised from semi-hard wood cutting. Semi-hard wood, it's not very hard. It's not very soft, semi-hard. Uh, cutting is uh, taken uh, from a well-established uh, garden that is almost uh, which is eight to twelve months old, uh, close to one year old tree. You can use take that, and uh, you're going to cut uh, uh, at least uh, ten to uh, twelve mm diameter uh, of that uh, cutting should be a twelve, a ten to twelve mm diameter, uh, which is chosen, and uh, this should be at least fifteen to twenty centimeter in height. Uh, you're going to take that size, uh, almost the size of a big scale, uh, close to big scale, 20 centimeters, with at least three to four active buds. As you can see over here, there are some buds, uh, three to four active buds that are present. And uh, uh, as I said, a 45 degrees uh, slanting cut has to be done. And care should be taken uh, when you are making a sharp, clean cut on both the sides, because uh, both the uh, sides have to be cut very clean. Otherwise, uh, if you're going to make a mistake over there, uh, if you're going to have some tear or damages, the plant is not going to grow. So that is uh, the minimum requirement that you have to take when you're uh, taking, doing a cutting type of propagation. So how you're going to propagate? They the mostly they are pro propagated through cutting. So here you can see all these are cuttings that have been uh, kept and you can see how the foliages have uh, arrived. Uh, it's a very quick type of propagation as we talked about. The cuttings may be planted straight away in the uh, main field itself or nursery may be raised and uh, sprouted and rooted samplings may be planted in the main field. So either way you can do either uh, from the nursery that is after sowing the seed, you have the nursery plants, either you're going to get that nursery plant and plant it or directly from the cutting you're going to so, uh, uh, put them under the, in the soil and you're going to uh, raise them. The later method is advisable because it is easy uh, establishment in the main field. So what is a later method? It is the uh, saplings, uh, that is the cuttings that are going to take and you can just uh, directly raise them. How are you going to manage? So once you have sowed them or once you have uh, uh, placed them in the plant, in the soil, what are those that are necessary for managing the nursery? what you're going to do first irrigation that is you're going to water them because the plant needs water needs sunlight for photosynthesis to grow so irrigation is the first one first uh, they have to be provided uh, immediately uh, after planting that is when you're planting uh, either the nursery or the cutting after planting first thing they need is water so how much of water uh, you have to give them at least four to five days uh, in case of sandy, loamy soil, that is if the soil is very dry, then you're going to irrigate them, water them uh, every every four to five days, once in every four to five days. But if it is a, a black cotton or a clay soil, that is a, a water retention soil, you can water them uh, once in a week, that is uh, after every six to seven days, you can water them. That is irrigation. So when you're talking about weeding, weeding is uh, removal of unwanted plants is called weeding because you don't need weeding um, uh, weeded, uh, the weed plants because they are going to take away all the nutrition 
uh, and they don't allow the main plants to grow. So that is the reason why you have to uh, remove the weeds time and again because you, uh, even at your home, if you're going, uh, if you're growing any small plants at home, you can see that around the main plants you have that small small uh, plants growing, which is not necessary at all. So uh, because uh, they are going to take away the nourishment, what you are, want to uh, give it to the main plant. So what you're going to do in the weeding? Nursery breads must be kept free from the weeds. That is at least two rounds of manual weeding uh, are required. Manual weeding. Weeding means to remove the weed plants. Manual weeding because the, you don't have machines for it earlier because they are very small ones, nursery ones. So first, after every 25 to 30 days, that is uh, once in a month, first time you're going to do. And the second time, uh, every two months, uh, you're going to do this. Uh, weeding or removal of the weeds every two months that is after planting uh, fertilization uh, how you're going to apply the fertilizers that is uh, manure or uh, the nutrition to the soil or the sapling so that the uh, plants can grow very well chemical fertilizers must be applied in the nursery when the saplings have attained 20 to 25 centimeters in height so almost uh, uh, the, the, the scale size, the big scale size, once they have attained, you're going to apply the first chemical fertilizers uh, in about uh, two months, that is. After planting, preferably, and after second round of weeding, you're going to do this. Following this, 500 grams of ammonium sulfate or instead you can use even urea, that is 200 grams of urea can be applied per bed followed by irrigation. So each bed uh, we, we made a 4 meter into 1.5 meter bed each. So each bed needs almost around 500 grams of ammonium sulfate. If you don't have ammonium sulfate, you can have to use even urea. Urea only 200, uh, 250 grams of urea you're going to use per bed. And uh, this should be enough for uh, uh, encouraging or uh, enriching the soil with the nutrients. That's why it's called as fertilizer application. If you're not going to apply the fertilizers, fertilizers uh, the plants may not grow that good and uh, they're not going to have uh, the proteins that is needed for the uh, silkworm to produce that uh, high grade silkworm. Uh, we also talked what are the different proteins that is uh, uh, given by this uh, plant leaves that is uh, fibroin and serinin are uh, important proteins. So if you're going to make your uh, plants to grow very well, then definitely your output in the silkworm threads uh, is also going to be perfect. So each step needs lots of patience. Patience pays off is what is all about. So if you want to have a good product, you're going to take care of the plants also. So coming to the next one, we'll be talking about grafting. So you can also propagate the plants through grafting. Uh, we must have heard uh, in our uh, um, earlier education also what grafting is and those who are into gardening definitely they will know what grafting is so what is it mostly uh, used method of uh, vegetative propagation in temperate areas uh, particularly in the colder regions why because uh, they already want a well-developed plant so just uh, grafting uh, would be better off uh, for the growth of the plant in a faster way and um, um, because in the colder regions, uh, the roots are not uh, easily developed. So already uh, those the plants which are having the roots, you can directly graft the one that you want to grow. Uh, and then you can have a, a beautiful plant uh, very soon. So how and what are the different type of grafting, grafting methods we'll be talking about. So grafting is a technique of joining two parts of different varieties of plants in such a way that they unite to grow as one plant. Here we are not talking about uh, something completely different in propagation. So, for example, uh, one part uh, of the tree, that is the roots, uh, if one type of a tree is able to grow even in a dry region, then you are going to consider that. But those plants which are going to grow in a dry region, they might not be having proper leaves. So, you want to have a plant which is going to give lots of leaves. So, you, what you are going to do is you are going to uh, cut that part and you are going to graft into the root part which can survive even in the uh, dry area uh, which doesn't need much water or uh, which is uh, uh, resistant to any pests or insect insects so you're going to graft these two so you, you have different names for that so what is it the part of the graft, uh, graft combination which develops into a shoot system of a new plant is called the scan 
and uh, is chosen from a variety with desirable characters whatever character you want in that plant so for example if you're going to uh, want a different color rose you want to take that cutting of a rose and you're going to keep it in a area where uh, it can go even in the uh, uh, dry areas that is uh, too hot areas because usually you have beautiful colored uh, flowers only in the cold region but you want that same color in a dry area where the temperature is too high you're going to select a plant which can grow even in the uh, hotter uh, conditions I want to take that scion that is the preferred character that you want. I want to graft it to it, and what you get is ultimately the the plant or the color that you want. So that is mainly basically the scion and the stock. So what is the stock over here? The other part which becomes the root portion of the future plant is called the stock, and the desired plant that you are going to take becomes the scion type. So you are going to uh, select these two. You're going to graft them and what you get is a beautiful plant that you're going to uh, get in the future so this is the picture where you can easily understand so this is the preferred uh, plant that you want which is having that uh, characters what you want in a plant the uh, over here when you're talking about uh, mulberry cultivation you want a very good uh, glossy green leaves uh, which is having that uh, high quality uh, proteins present in them so that uh, uh, larval forms can eat and feed on them. So that's a span. You're going to select that span. And this the stock is the one that is having the roots. So you're going to graft these two and you're going to tie a piece of cloth around uh, tightly so that uh, uh, it is not loosened up and there is no air uh, moving inside. And um, what you ultimately get is a plant in very few days. So what he says over here, the scan grows with the help of a nourishment supplied by the stock. So this scan is going to go very well with the supplement of uh, the stock that is going to be given. Uh, because the scan and the stock is going to come in contact with the cambium layer of each other. And um, uh, and then the callus uh, uh, tissue can become activated in both. And what you get is a proper plant of uh, your uh, desired qualities in a plant. And a union of stock and a scan is established within two or three months. So within two or three months, you're going to get a beautiful plant with the foliages. And uh, of course, it might take some months to go into a tree or a bush, uh, whichever type you want. So coming to types of grafting. So here on the grafting, you're going to talk about the different types of grafting. And the first one, um, the general method of uh, classifying grafting method is based on the nature of the span, that is the preferred quality, and the part of the stock in which it is inserted. So accordingly, uh, they will be given that name. So grafting can be classified into three types we'll be talking about over here. That is the uh, root grafting, shoot grafting, and bud grafting. So that is, uh, if you're going to use the root, then it's called as a root grafting. If you're going to uh, want to have a shoot, uh, the preferred type of a shoot, then it's called as a shoot grafting. And if you want to grow it by bud, then you call them as a bud grafting. So basically, the type of the part that you're going to use to grow the plants is uh, what it is classified, uh, and the names are given accordingly so coming to the root grafting method over here so here what is happening the scan is consisting of shoots so if you can see over there it's consisting of a shoot uh, with the buds which is inserted into the stock so this is a stock here you're going to cut off the uh, branch and this becomes a stock and you're going to get another scion that is your preferred type of a character over there and as you can see over there the preferred character uh, which is in yellow color. So the root is already there, that, is, that becomes a stock, and the scion wood is inserted where there is a cut, and uh, it is being tied up with a bandage over there, and what happens is after some time, uh, you get a beautiful foliage over there. Uh, that is called as root grafting, and this is a popular method uh, uh, which is easy to carry out and has a high uh, success uh, rate uh, for growing this particular uh, mulberry plants. So that's called root grafting over here. Coming to uh, bud grafting, uh, we are going to talk about uh, root grafting and then you're going to talk about the bud grafting. So what is a bud grafting over here? Um, the bud grafting also comes under the category of uh, field grafting and in this case normal seedlings or already planted buff seedlings are used as stock. The small seedling which have already been uh, uh, sowed and planted, uh, they are going to be used as uh, stock over here. 
and uh, what are the precautions you have to uh, take care for this particular uh, uh, growth is while removing the bud from the stand that is you are going to take out the bud from the stand that is the preferred plant you are going to take out the bud no woody portion is, uh, should adhere to the bark so when you are cutting the uh, bark with that bud it should not be very hard it should be semi uh, hard kind of a bark that you are taking and bandaging can be done in a manner that neither water nor air can enter in the bandaged area so you, you don't need the air or the water to enter because it is going to rot that particular place or sometimes even infection can occur sprouting of other buds on the stalk should be inhibited so the, on the stalk side that is uh, the one that is used used uh, on the lower portion the root portion if at all there is any bud that is being formed you are going to remove those bud you are not going to encourage uh, the uh, the shoot part of the bud to grow you are encouraging only the scion part of the bud to uh, grow because you want that variety to grow in that particular uh, grafting so that's uh, bud grafting so under bud grafting you have different type of uh, grafting over here so we will be talking about patch budding you will be talking about uh, tea budding flute budding and one bud one root uh, grafting so what are these first one we'll talk about the patch uh, budding so here patch budding you can see over here uh, a small piece of patch is cut off from the uh, desired spine so in, in a patch budding the stalk is prepared by removing a portion of the bark with the bud so you're going to remove this portion uh, of the bark with the bud this is a stalk which is going to be there and into this kind uh, a desired uh, into this stalk a desired kind is inserted in its place and tied with the fibers so here you have been uh, you're cutting down or cutting out uh, the bud and then the desired portion of the kind is inserted at in the stalk and then we are going to bandage them so this is what is called as a, a patch budding a scan is bud is inserted in its place tied with fibers properly bandaged with a soft fiber and sealed with a grafting wax or grafting clay because we don't want the air or water to enter uh, inside that bandaged area so this is patch budding so what is happening in a tea budding in a tea budding the stalk is cut in the shape of a t over here so you can see uh, this is an inverted t this is a straight t that you are uh, uh, going to take and um, uh, this is a small bud uh, which is of your interest that you have cut and um, you are going to add them into the stalk over there so a t shaped incision is made on the part of the stalk at the nodal region uh, into which a scan bud is going to be inserted so with the back of the bud uh, facing the wood and its ab abdomen facing the epidermal layer the bud is inserted thoroughly so you're going to just open it uh, properly uh, in the t and you're going to insert the bud inside that and uh, this is what they are going to look like so they are going to be firm inside between the cleft uh, and then you're going to uh, between the bark and the wood of the stalk until it is firm and only its tip is exposed so only the tip is exposed over there you are going to bandage them thoroughly and only the tip of the bud is going to be exposed outside why because you are going to allow the foliage to uh, grow from there and after insertion the grafted bud is bandaged sealed and uh, you get a proper uh, foliage coming out from that bud so this is a tea buddy so what is tea buddy you're going to make an insertion uh, in the shape of a tea in the uh, stock one and then uh, the desired bud is going to be inserted into the t and you're going to bandage them and allow them to go that is t buddy also a flute buddy so here in a flute buddy what you're going to do is uh, you're going to remove a length of 2.5 to 3.5 centimeter around the plant so you're going to cut around the plant uh, almost uh, in the length of 2.5 centimeter to 3.5 centimeter cut you're going to make around uh, that is almost like a round shape you're going to cut around the uh, branch uh, of what uh, the stalk that you're going to cut and the bud of the stand of the same length as that of the bark is inserted this is the uh, scion uh, of the same length and this is to be inserted into the stalk where you have already cut out a 2.5 cm to 3.5 cm gap of here you're going to add this scion into the stalk and you're going to allow them to grow 
and uh, the girdle shape cut measuring 5 to 10 mm is made at the center of the butt and this is grafted to the star of a similar shape made in the stock and they are bound together and uh, ultimately you are going to get a proper uh, foliage that is coming out from the from the bud and the last one is a one bud one root grafting what do you mean by that uh, popularly uh, followed in japan that is a single bud is inserted into one root stock still attached in the soil so you're not going to separate them it's only a single bud that is inserted uh, into one root stock uh, and then uh, uh, they are allowed to grow so that is one bud one root grafting so coming to layering so how we are going to do a uh, layering type of propagation so this is also one more type that is a shoot uh, type of uh, propagation over here so here what you're going to do under the shoot type of uh, layering, uh, this is a method of propagation of development of uh, uh, roots is induced from the stem. So already there is a stem, you're going to induce the roots to grow from the stem and you're going to get large number of uh, saplings from that. So that is what is basically about layering over here while it is still attached to its mother. So what you're going to do is you're generally going to uh, uh, bend a branch uh, 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 downwards and you're going to allow them to grow in the but usually in some uh, garden plants we do this particular type of layering type of uh, propagation so what is happening over here such a rooted stem is known as layers because you're layering you're bending the branch and you're going to layer them to the uh, ground so that's called as layering the layer is attached from the uh, afterwards after when the roots are formed the layer is then detached from the mother plant and you are allowing that new plant to grow on its own. And the main advantage of this method is simplicity. So it's very simple. You're just pulling a, a branch, uh, inserting it into the mud and you are allowing them to grow on its own. So that is very simple type. You're not cutting them, you're not grafting them, you're not, uh, uh, you don't have to worry about how you have to cut it at 45 degrees angle. All these can be avoided. So that's why we say that this is the simplest type of uh, propagation safest cheapest among the method of vegetable to propagation and there is no fear of roots withering as in case of cutting or grafting because uh, in the case of cutting and grafting what happens is after say one or two months you will find that the roots have rotten uh, and uh, the plant ultimately dies and all your the uh, energy uh, is wasted the time the energy and the amount is wasted over here so when you're talking about this layering, which we talked about the simplest and the safer, the safest. Under this, you have the first one, uh, uh, simple type of layering. So what is a simple type of layering over here? In the simple type of layering, a ring or a bark is removed. So uh, here you can see a ring or a bark is removed. That is almost 2.5 to 5 centimeters in length from the shoots of the lower cut trained mulberry plants. And the branch is bent. Uh, in, in such a way that the portion uh, without the bark uh, gets buried in the soil. Uh, so here you have those bark uh, and uh, without the bark, the branch that is without having a bark is buried in the soil and fixed up tightly uh, into the soil with a small book-like structure. So you can see that a U-shaped book-like structure is pressed so that the branch doesn't come out because uh, if there's any air, wind or something like that, uh, uh, then the, with the movement of the plant, what happens is the branch can be, uh, the, the layer that you have uh, put it inside can be uprooted. So to fasten it up inside the soil, we're going to place those uh, ring or hook like structures so that it can stay in the mud without being disturbed. So what you're going to do, you're going to bend it in such a way uh, that the bark, uh, uh, the, the portion without the bark gets buried in the soil uh, and the tip doesn't get buried, but it remains out of the soil. Why? because they have to uh, uh, prepare its own food for during photosynthesis. You don't need the uh, green part to be buried inside. After some time, what happens? What do you find? The roots develop from the buried portion of the stem. So you can find the roots developing from the buried portion of the stem, which is later cut off from the mother. So you're going to chop off from its mother so that you allow this plant to grow independently. That is simple layering type coming to trench laying in this trench layering you're going to get more number of plant in just one branch how 
what you're going to do is uh, again this method is followed in japan uh, what was the other method that was followed in japan one shoot one root method was also followed in japan uh, the trench method is again one of the one of the uh, easy and uh, uh, you get more number of sapling from one branch itself so what you're going to do uh, in trench layering a branch of a low cut trained plant is uh, with the buds so you can see uh, this is a low cut uh, trained plant uh, it has more branches over here and each branch is having buds. You can see there are so many buds in each branches over there. So what you are going to do is uh, you are going to take a considerable length of the middle of the branch is covered. That is, uh, you are going to take it, you are going to bend it in the, uh, in the soil. So this is what uh, you are going to bend in the soil and you are going to cover it with a considerable amount of mud over here in the first part, but you are not going to cover the uh, the part that is having uh, but you're not going to cover much uh, of soil over there so that uh, uh, you're not uh, uh, completely covering the buds inside the mud so what you're going to do you're going to cover them with a considerable amount of mud and manure and allow it to grow for some time you're going to water them and after sometimes what you see is uh, from these buds uh, these are the new shoots that develop from the buds and the roots develop it below the soil. So wherever the shoots have uh, risen, uh, you can find the roots also growing underneath them. So uh, you have a number of plants uh, uh, that is growing from that same branch. If you're going to allow this branch to grow, you would have got only one plant, one plant with uh, leaves. But here, when you're going to do this trench layering from one branch, you're going to grow at least uh, as, as many as buds are present on that particular uh, trench. So this is called this trench laying, which can be easily propagated. Now coming to the last type of a layering, air layering. So how you're going to propagate uh, an air layering plant over here. So what you're going to do is, uh, this method is also called as booting method. That is uh, about one to two centimeters of circular bark is removed from the middle of an erect branch. We have a branch. So something like you want uh, to grow the uh, roots uh, from different plants over here. The same way, what you're going to do is from the branch, you're going to make a cut of uh, one to uh, two centimeters circular bark is removed in the middle of a uh, branch. And what uh, you're going to do is you're going to cover them with peat moss, uh, or also you can use a well uh, decomposed organic matter uh, with a little root hormone. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a little root hormone into the peat moss or manure. Uh, why? Because you, you want to induce the roots to develop. So that is the reason why we are adding root hormone to that particular organic uh, manure. And this is placed in this region where we have cut uh, one to two centimeters circular round. And you're going to tie them securely uh, with a pollen cover. And you're going to add a little bit of water to that. Uh, so that uh, it needs, uh, they get water for the roots to be developed. So what happens after one or two months, you can clearly see that the roots have been developed from that particular branch where it has been cut. Why? Because we have uh, given them manure and also we have given them the root hormones uh, so that it can uh, produce the roots. And after the roots have been developed, this can be cut off from the parent and this can be uh, planted. Uh, as a new plant, so you can get a new uh, mulberry plant from the air layering. So this is uh, uh, about air layering. So we talked about um, uh, the root uh, layering, the air, uh, the um, uh, shoot layering, and also the bud uh, layering type of uh, propagation. So these are how you can propagate in a different ways. That is first we talked about the seed method. Uh, then you talked about uh, uh, the layering method and all those which can be used for propagation of uh, mulberry leaves. That is if you're going to uh, uh, need lot of uh, food, you, it is always better to have our own uh, uh, land where we are growing uh, uh, the leaves and also you are sure that uh, there is no much uh, pesticides and insecticides uh, sprayed on the uh, leaves uh, and you're going to give a proper organic leaves to the uh, growing larval silkworms uh, wherein they're going to uh, ultimately they're going to give us a proper high value or high quality silk is what our motive is all about so the uh, this is uh, how you can propagate uh, the mulberry leaves and uh, you can uh, use those uh, leaves for uh, uh, 
nutritive purpose. That is, you're going to feed the larval forms uh, and you're going to uh, get a good uh, type of uh, silk. So this is all about uh, propagation. And uh, yeah, so with this, we come to the end of our class. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can contact us in, from your department over here. Uh, so see you all in the next class. Thank you.